Hey everyone, on today's episode of Classic Mini DIY, we are going to be putting the main shaft back together. So stay tuned. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on Classic Mini DIY. Today we are going to be reassembling the main shaft on the rod change gearbox that we're working on. And this episode should be pretty fun. It's always cool to be working with brand new clean parts, which you'll see here in just a minute. But quick heads up, with the new year, I am starting off a new tradition, a new monthly tradition. I'm going to be releasing new stickers once a month. So I'm gonna make a new sticker design every month and I'm gonna post that to the merch store where you guys can pick those up and uh, if you wanna help support the channel, I'll have a new sticker for you guys every single month. There are two that I'm just launching. You can find those on the side of the screen here. One is the DIY crew, which you can use to show your support of the channel and show that you aren't afraid to get your hands a little dirty. And then the other one is the Mini Preservation Society sticker. This one you can stick on your car and show people that you really care about preserving the Mini and preserving and restoring it so it'll last many years to come. But if you wanna pick up one of those, pre-orders are currently open on the merch store. You can find them at merch.classicminidiy.com. Wait, what's that? You, you wanna know what this, this gearbox is? This remote gearbox? Yeah, I'm sure you probably do. And you're probably wondering why this chisel is sticking out the side of it. And, and for those of you who work on gearboxes, you're probably cringing inside right now. But I'm not ready to show you guys this just yet. We do need to clean off the workbench so we can get in here and start putting together that main shaft though. So let's get over here, clear this off and prepare some space for that brand new main shaft. All right, folks, so as you can see here, I've got some stuff laid out. You know, we've got a few different gears, a few different things all laid out and, and ready to go back on the main shaft. First, we have on the right side, our actual main shaft, followed by needle rollers, a speed journal, four bulk rings, detent springs and their balls, a needle roller, two thrust washers, which are slightly different. And then on the left side, we have our synchronizer hubs, which are these four pieces here. We have our first gear, we have our second gear, we have our third gear, and then we have our final motion shaft here. Now, as you can see, all of this stuff is new or has been considerably cleaned. So all the gears on the left-hand side and all the synchronizer hubs, those have been cleaned. And then on the right-hand side, our detent springs, our thrust washers, our bulk rings and our needle rollers. Those are all brand new with our main shaft having been cleaned as well. So it's extremely important that when you're putting all this stuff back together, you start with a clean system because well, you want all of your parts to be clean. I mean, that's a pretty good motto for life. In fact, keep your parts clean. But all the parts here I have shown, these are all gonna be listed in the description of this video with links to seven mini parts as well as guessworks. Depending on what part of the world you're in, you'll be able to find any of these parts you need so that you can get your gearbox back together. But let's go ahead to the next step and start putting this together. All right, so like I said, we have our main shaft here and I've got this just in a bench vise, loosely tight. I did put a, a piece of fabric down here. I don't know if that's actually necessary, but it just makes me feel better. First thing they're gonna do is take one of your needle rollers here. Now there's two different kinds of needle rollers. This one is the one that comes apart so that you can make it over this gear right here. And this is just gonna slide over right down onto that space there. Just like that. Now with this, you don't wanna put that in just completely dry. You do wanna add a little bit of lubricant to that and you want something that's kind of viscous. You don't want like a cam lube or something like that. I'm gonna use one of my engine assembly lubrications, one that will get in these bearings nice and nice and good, but it will also spin and you know take a good bit of force here. But it won't like cause it to get gummed up. It's just the right amount of lubricant. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is take our detent spring and put that back in there. So we have one spring with two little stoppers here on it and that's gonna go right through this hole right here, 
right on in and it should poke out both sides just like that. And that's actually something that I missed when I was showing you guys the springs over here. The springs I showed you over here were, were actually our synchronizer hub springs, which I'll show you a little bit more of in a minute. What we're gonna do now is take our second gear, that is this gear right here, and we're gonna slide that down over the shaft. And as you can see, it's not gonna go down with those detent springs on, and what you have to do is push both of those detents in so that you can get this to you know, fall down in place. There we go. And one thing that you are gonna to wanna to be careful, these shouldn't pop out the top here, but you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that they don't go flying anywhere because that needs to stay in there when you put your thrust washer in. Next up, we're gonna take our thrust washer and note our thrust washer has little notches on it like this on one side, and then on the other side, it only has one notch, one cutout. You're gonna to wanna to take the side with all of the notches on it and that goes down. So we're gonna slide this down over our spring here and this should go to right about there now this gear has some holes on it you can see one here let me rotate it around there's number two these get lined up with that detent spring and what you do is you actually lower this little thrust washer down and you have to push both of those in at the same time. I know it sounds impossible, but it is possible. And all you need are two little punches here. Line this up. There we go. And so once that's down, you have to rotate this. You can see here that the thrust washer lines up with these gears right here so that it can slide down. However, once it's down, you need to actually take some take a small little punch or a, a, or a poker like this, and there's that top notch, you use that to rotate that around until the detent locks it in place, just like that. So let's take a closer look. So what you can see here is that detent spring now filling that space since we rotated this, and this is gonna hold that in place so that it can't slide off anymore. So now it's ready for the next step. So next up, what we're gonna do is go ahead and loosen this up, flip it over, just like that. Go ahead and put that back in the vise there, and as you can see, that is spinning nice and smooth now already. Next, we're gonna take our other detent spring, and note this one only has one hole on it. So there's not a hole on both sides, so your detent spring only looks just like this. It just has one notch. That will go in right here just like that. And so you can see it just poking out the side there. We're gonna take another one of those needle roller bearings and we're gonna slide that over here. And that's another one of the ones that comes apart at the seam. Go ahead and put that on there. As you can see, I've got some assembly lube on this. One quick note about these needle rollers is that sometimes in transit, these needles will fall out and uh, it's not a big deal. You just take the needle and you put it back in. Next, we're gonna take our gear. Looks just like this, that's a gear and we are going to slide that down over this again. Now, this one is gonna slide over without any fuss. It is gonna be in place like so, and then you are gonna take your other thrust washer, same idea, you're gonna have the sides that have all of the notches on it, those are gonna go down, and then at the top side there's a small hole that allows you to kind of spin it, make it a little bit easier. So then what we'll do is go ahead and set this down right here, and one thing you're gonna to wanna to take note is that one of these notches on here is slightly larger than the others. That's because this one needs to go down so that you can press that detent spring down. On this gear, there is no hole present for you to align and push to, to push in that detent spring. So you're gonna take your little, pu a little punch, push that detent in, just like that. And then you're gonna do the same thing you did with the other one where you take your little punch and you rotate it so it clicks into place just like that. So now that's not going anywhere. 
All right, so this next part is something that you might not have seen before. This is what's called a synchro hub, and a lot of people look at these things and they're like, oh my God, how do they work? This is too complicated. And it's really, really not that complicated. So you have your synchro hub that normally has a spring, has three springs and three balls in it. And this is what goes over your two gears to select them and engage them. This is always something worth rebuilding if you have the gearbox apart because, well, how often are you gonna be this deep in your car doing this stuff? Now for this job, Guessworks sent over a really cool aluminum bespoke tool. And I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So you have your first synchro hub here and you see there's a raised edge on this and then a flat side. The raised edge, we'll go ahead and say goes up for this situation. And then you take the raised end of the synchro hub and that is gonna go up as well. So first you take your inner hub and you take your three springs, go ahead and plop those brand new springs in there, taking care to make sure that they don't fall out. And then go ahead and set this in here and line up the springs with these little notches on this little device here, all right? And so now what you're gonna do is take those little balls that have a tendency to bounce all over the place. You're gonna drop those into these three little notches. I think that if you, uh, if you are a smart dude or smart dudette, you probably have an idea of what's gonna happen next. But what we'll do, make sure all those are lined up, and then you simply rotate this. So now the, the tool itself is pushing those balls in. You take your synchro hub outer, and what you need to do is line up these openings with the openings on your inner hub so that it lines up like that. Then flip this over, set it down, and there you go. You've got a synchro hub freshly rebuilt with brand new springs. So after you put those new springs in, it's gonna be pretty tight. You know, you're still gonna be able to move it, but it's gonna be really rigid. That's the whole point of replacing those springs is making sure that's nice and rigid and tight. So I'm gonna time lapse through the next one. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Set that off to the side. We have our inner synchro, outer synchro. Note that this one's a little bit different, but the same concept applies, your raised ridge, goes on the side that has a raised ridge here. Right, and there you have it. We have two freshly assembled Synchro hubs. Now, you can see now why this tool is so cool and so helpful because virtually that would be pretty much impossible to do by yourself uh, if you didn't have something to hold all, the, all three of those springs in. You basically need, I don't know, like three or four hands. So let's get back over to the main shaft and continue assembling with these brand new refreshed synchro hubs. All right, so like I said, the next thing that we're gonna install is our synchro hubs. The first thing you need to do is take your bulk ring and with the little notches pointing upwards towards the inside of the synchro hub, you're gonna take this, set it right down on top there, just like that. And then you're gonna take this synchro hub and slide it right down over all of this with the bulk ring notches kind of falling into place inside these little notches here. Next, we're gonna take another one of these bulk rings, this time with the notch pointing downwards, and that is gonna go onto the other side. If that'll fit in there, it'll be pretty clear how that fits. Now, the next step is installing our speed journal, which you can see back here is gonna need to get heated up first. This is gonna make sure that it slides all the way down around that shaft. So let's heat it up, all right? And with that heated up, we're gonna go ahead and pick it up and put it onto our main shaft here. And that slid right down into place, but let's just make sure, give it an extra little push. Yep. That is in good shape, it looks like. All right, and the next thing that we're gonna take is our bulk ring. We're gonna slide that down. And keep in mind that those little arrows should be pointing down in towards the actual synchro hub assembly. And then we'll take our needle rollers. This is the larger needle roller. Slide that down. That's gonna fit right down on that speed journal. And then finally, we're gonna take our last gear here, slide that down over that speed journal. 
and into place. All right, so now that that is done, the last thing that we gotta do is put the synchro hub on the other side of this main shaft. Now, keep in mind that when you rotate this over, it's gonna flop around, so you're just gonna wanna make sure that you don't let that fall apart. Go ahead and tighten that back down. And now we need to put the bulk ring on this side here. So we're gonna take those notches, point them up right here. And then we're gonna take our other synchro hub, go ahead and slide that down over here. And you are gonna to wanna to line up the bulk ring again. And then what you can do now, if you'd like, is go ahead and install the last bulk ring here. Now the main shaft is effectively assembled. So the remaining gears that you have on your bench right now, like this motion shaft right here, this is not gonna get installed until it goes into the case. But just so you have an idea, it goes in right here. And hopefully this does a little bit better job illustrating, but your synchro hub will either slide down here to select this gear, slide up to select this gear, slide this one down to select this gear or slide up to select that gear. And that is how your main shaft is selecting gears and engaging them in your gearbox. It's really not that complicated, but it's very easy to get confused and about how all this works. So that's actually gonna be it for this episode. I'm not gonna cover too much in this episode. We are gonna reinstall this main shaft in the case next, but I'll save that for the next episode so we can really focus on how that gets installed. All right, so that wraps up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. I hope you guys found it helpful. Um, this is my first time installing and assembling a main shaft here, so I hopefully did not make any mistakes. Um, if I did, post them in the comment section below and let me know um, because I do still have it just sitting here right here on the side and uh, it's not going back in the case just yet. I kind of want to hear what you guys think, make sure I didn't do anything wrong. But I do want to say a huge thank you to 7 Mini Parts for sending me all the extras and bits that I needed for this main shaft and a huge thank you to Guessworks as well. He sent me this super cool tool as well as the one I used to remove the main shaft. If you haven't seen that, check out the link that's popping up in the corner here. He makes these really cool bespoke tools that are really helpful in getting that main shaft out and installing your synchro hubs or reassembling them as it were. And also, I got this new toolbox. I still need stickers for it. I got one from a viewer here, a little green mini with it zooming around and him giving a thumbs up in the corner. It's really cool. Um, if you wanna see your sticker on this toolbox on the top, on the side here, send them to this address. It should be popping up on the toolbox or something right now. Um, that address is my PO box. And if your sticker is not excessively vulgar, I'll, I'll definitely slap it on the side of this toolbox here and you get to see it in all of the upcoming episodes. But a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are the ones that really help make this possible. All this stuff definitely costs money. It's not free and uh, every dollar that you guys support me with each month really, really helps. It all goes straight back into the channel so I can buy gearboxes, so I can buy engine blocks to show you guys how to work on your classic cars. So if you have any interest in supporting the channel, the link to my Patreon is along the bottom of the screen or you can check out my merch at merch.classicminidiy.com. But until the next rod change assembly video or remote change disassembly video, enjoy those minis and motor on.